In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering the Nord Sample Editor 4 software in more detail, showing how you can record directly into the software to create your samples, how to edit those samples, and then how to transfer them as a sample instrument onto your Nord keyboard. So the first thing to do is connect your Nord keyboard up to your computer via USB, and then launch the Nord Sample Editor 4 software. The next step is to go to the configuration window. And here you can choose your input and your output and where your resultant project and files will be stored on your computer. You can also decide whether your file is going to be stereo or, if you tick the box, mono. And this is an important consideration, especially if you're trying to be efficient with the memory on your keyboard, as obviously a mono file will be half the size of a stereo file. So if you're recording an analog instrument with a single output, or you're just using one microphone, then there's no need to record in stereo. However, if you're using two microphones, maybe you're sampling an acoustic guitar, or you're sampling a synthesizer sound that's reliant on stereo effects, then make sure the box is unticked and you'll be sampling in stereo. Another important setting is the file format. And Nord have provided all three formats here so that you can create samples regardless of the age and model of your instrument but it's important to choose the correct format to ensure that the resultant file will be compatible with your keyboard. If you go to tooltips and choose about, here you'll find a very useful list which shows you all the different formats and the keyboards that are compatible. So for example, if you own a Nord Wave, you would choose the Nord Sample 2 format and that way you know that the resultant file will load into your keyboard correctly. A new feature of Sample Editor 4 is the ability to record directly into the software now, which is really useful if you need to create samples quickly. As an example, I'm going to sample some sounds off of my Drum 3P here and transfer them onto my Stage 3. So the first thing to do is hit the Record button, and now I'm going to hit the Drum 3P and sample the sounds. Maybe select a couple of extra sounds here. And that's all done, hit the stop button, press the generate and transfer to Nord button, and that's transferring it onto my stage three. And that's done. So now here are my drum 3P samples on my stage three. Obviously, this is just an example of how to create samples on the fly. Sample Editor 4 has a lot more functionality within it that you can use to refine your samples before you transfer them onto the keyboard. So when you're editing any samples within the Sample Editor software, you can select samples by clicking on them in the audio window or on the notes themselves. And you audition samples by playing the space bar or pressing the play button. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remap my drum samples. Remapping is the process whereby you take your samples and assign them either to a particular area of the keyboard or you assign them, in this case, to specific notes. Now you can see here that the software has assigned all my drum sounds chromatically and that's because the drum sounds themselves didn't contain any pitch information apart from these two toms here which contained enough pitch information to be assigned to the correct notes. So what I need to do now is to rearrange all my drum samples so that they line up with the general MIDI standard drum map layout. Remapping samples is based on their root key. The root key is the note that if you play it the sample will play at its original pitch. So in this case, this tom plays at F3 at the moment. And you can move your samples either by clicking and holding them and dragging them to a new location or clicking on the plus or minus signs to assign it to a note. Now it's important to note that even though I've now moved this sample to a different note, it's still playing at its original pitch because this is its root key. So now I'm going to move all my other samples into their correct positions. So C1 is my kick drum, which is the correct place for it. Now D1 should be my snare, but it isn't. My snare is currently here on C sharp 1. So I'm going to drag and move my snare onto D1. Now you can see what's happened here. I now have this number 2 here instead of a number 1. And this indicates that I have more than one sample assigned to the same note. When you have multiple samples assigned to the same note, you can select them individually by clicking on the sample above. So this is the open hi-hat sample, and this is my snare sample. So what I need to do is select my open hi-hat sample, and I'm going to move the root key 
for that sample up to A sharp 1, which is the correct location for the open hi-hat. And now I have my snare on D1 in the correct place. So I'm now going to remap all my other drum samples and put them in the correct locations. So this is my cymbal, which I know will be on C sharp 2. This is my closed hi-hat, which I want on F sharp 1. I'm going to move my tom-toms around, hand clap. Now I'll rearrange my tom-toms. So now I have all my drums mapped in the general MIDI layout. So now that I've made all those changes, I can give my project the proper name. I can assign it to a category, so I'll choose drums, and I can also assign dynamics. Now with dynamics ticked, the Nord Sample 3 and 4 formats allow preset velocity and filter settings to be saved with your sample instrument, depending on which category you have chosen. And these settings are automatically loaded into your keyboard whenever you select that sample instrument. Of course, these settings can be changed at any time using the keyboard's controls, and I'll show you how to do this later on in this video. So now that is all done, if I hit the Save and Transfer to Nord button, this will save all those changes, and it will update my sample instrument on my Stage 3, giving it this new name and assigning it to the drums category. And here they are mapped on the keyboard. So we've now seen how you can take an unpitched sound source, record it directly into the software, and then map those samples to specific notes. I'm now going to use a chromatic sound source, in this case my Korg MS-10 analog synth, and I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to record the synth directly into the software, so you can see how it handles pitched information, and then I'm going to use the editing functions to show you how you can customise your samples further before you transfer them onto your keyboard. But before I do any recording, I'm going to go back to the configuration window and check my settings. Because my MS-10 only has one output, there's no point in me recording in stereo. So I'm going to make sure the mono input button is checked. I'm also going to make use of a new feature in Sample Editor 4, and that's the threshold function. Here you can set the level, and the software will not start recording anything until your sound source exceeds this level. Now this isn't acting like a noise gate. If your sound has a natural decay, this will not cut out if it drops below the threshold level. So I'll give you an example. If I hit the record button, the software will confirm that it's armed, but it won't record anything until my sound source goes above this level. So if I play a note quietly, I'm not recording anything, but if I turn the volume up, as soon as I go above the level, now we start recording. I can turn my sound up a bit, but now, if I drop below the level, you'll see it's still recording until I press stop. So now you can see that the software started recording when my sound source exceeded the threshold level, but even when it dropped below the threshold level, the sound did not cut out. So let's clear all this, and now we can start recording properly. And of course the other consideration is file size. Now I could sample every single note on my synth, but as I've shown in previous videos, you don't actually have to do that. You can sample every other note, and the software is clever enough to fill in the gaps and pitch everything accordingly. So you end up with a much smaller file size. And that's what I'm going to do in this instance. So I press record. Now the software waits until I play my first note. So as soon as my note exceeds the threshold, it starts recording. playing every third note. And we're giving each note a nice long bit of sustain so it goes through its whole duration. Because the next step is going to be looping these notes. So I don't want them too short. So if you've got a specialised sound, it's always best to play it through its whole duration. And then it makes it a lot easier when it comes to looping it later on. I 
I should also mention that I've tuned my MS-10 before I started doing any of this and that's always worth considering when you're recording something like an old analog synth because you want to make sure it's in tune before you start making any of your samples. So now we are done. I press stop. You can see that the software has split my audio file into separate samples and it's also mapped them across the keyboard. And even though I didn't play every single note, you can see it's filled in all the gaps. So these samples will now play across the entire keyboard. And if I want to audition any of them, I can select the sample, press the space bar, or press the play button. And before I go any further, I'm going to give this project a name. Now this is also what the sample instrument is going to be called and how it will appear in whatever keyboard you load it into. I'm going to give it a category as well so I know where to find it. So I'm going to assign it to Synth Classic and I'm going to tick the Dynamics box. And this means that whatever Nord instrument I play this sample instrument in, I will have dynamic control over it. So I press the Save button. And now I can choose where to save it. I can create a project folder Press the save button and now it's saved my project to the computer. It hasn't actually saved it to the keyboard yet. If I wanted to do that I would press the save and transfer to Nord button. But at this point I've got lots more editing to do to these samples. So I'm not going to save to my keyboard at the moment. Now before we do any editing let's take a close look at this current project and see how it differs from the Drum 3P project. Because the MS-10 was outputting pitched information, the software was able to detect these pitches and it's automatically mapped my samples to the correct notes. So there is no need to do any of that sample remapping that we did with the Drum 3P. You should also be able to see from the shaded areas that the software has filled in all the gaps for me. So although we only sampled certain notes, the MS-10 sound will play across the whole width of the keyboard. If you want to see what the range is for a specific sample, just select it and it will be highlighted. So I can see that F2 will play across this whole area of the keyboard. But say I don't want F2 to play across this whole range. I can quickly adjust the zone boundaries to set it to any range that I want. Or I might want F2 just to play on this one specific note. To do that, just quickly double click above the note and the zone will snap to that note. And now F2 will only play here and nowhere else on the keyboard. And this works with any sample. If I double click above D4, it snaps the zone just to D4. If I double click again, it will snap back to its full range. And I'm going to do the same for F2, because I want my MS-10 sound to play across the whole width of the keyboard. So now let's take a look at editing samples. To select a sample for editing, you either click its waveform, or you can select it by clicking on its note on the keyboard. The fade in function applies a fixed 10 millisecond fade, which is ideal for getting rid of any unwanted clicks at the beginning of your samples. The fade out button turns the fade out function on, and unlike the fade in function, the fade out can be adjusted. You have a range of between 0 and 2 seconds, and this is useful for smoothing out the ending of any of your samples. To reset it, just double click on it, and it will default back to 200 milliseconds. If you press the unpitched button, then the selected sample will play at its original pitch regardless of which note you are triggering it from. This is useful for drum sounds which aren't necessarily chromatic. As we've already discussed, the root key allows you to move the position of a sample, but it will still play at its original pitch regardless of which note you assign it to. Loop turns the loop function on for the selected sample and we'll be covering this in a moment. The tune function is useful for fixing any pitch discrepancies on any of your samples. It has a range of between minus 50 and plus 50 cents. If you want to reset it at any time, just double click on it and it will go back to zero. Equally, the level function allows you to adjust the level of individual samples. And this is particularly useful if you have a project containing samples from different sources, because it allows you to compensate for the differences in volume between them all. It has a range of between minus 9 and plus 9 dB, and again, if you want to reset it, just double click on it and it will reset back to 0 dB. If you have been editing a particular sample and want to duplicate those settings on another sample, you have the copy and paste functions. 
and if you've made any mistakes you have the undo and the redo functions. If you want to edit a selection of samples, select the first one, hold the shift button down, select the last one, and now any edits you make will be applied to all the selected samples. If you want to edit all the samples in one go, then select all, and again any adjustments you make to one sample will apply to all the selected samples. If you have an erroneous sample in your project, select it, and then to delete it, just hit the remove sample button. So now we come on to looping, which is the process where you take relatively short samples and loop them to give them infinite sustain, or in the case of drum loops or sound effects, so they'll cycle indefinitely. But why worry about looping an instrument? I could transfer this sample instrument onto my keyboard right now and it would play fine. The issue comes with note length. If I transferred this over in its current state, then it doesn't matter how long I hold the note down for on my keyboard, the sound will always run out when the sample reaches its endpoint. However, if these samples are looped, then when they're transferred over onto the keyboard, you have complete control of the length of your sound, either simply by how long you hold the note down for, or you can shape them using the amp envelope. So to loop a sample, you simply select it and then press the loop button. And to help you accurately adjust your loop points, you have some useful shortcuts to some zoom features. Pressing stop start jumps in and lets you adjust your start and stop point. If it's just the start point you need to adjust, then pressing the start zoom button will snap you right to the beginning of your sample. Or if you're working on your loop, press the loop zoom button. If you need to zoom in further, you can hold the command key down and press the plus button and that will zoom in, or use the minus button to zoom out. So you notice you have a separate loop point, and this is useful because it means you don't have to loop from the beginning of your audio file. If you did, then you would always pick up the attack transient at the start of your sample and you would get an unnatural loop. So having a separate loop means that when you start your sample, it will play from the beginning, but then it will just loop between the loop and the stop points. Now you may have noticed that when I switched on the loop button, we also got some extra functions. The level envelope function is this useful white line, this graphic, which shows you how your loop point will behave. And snap to phase ensures that you don't get any nasty clicks at your loop point. So I'm going to zoom in to show you how this works. So here we've zoomed into the sample and you can see how the loop point and the stop point bisect the audio file at the same places. And this is why you don't get any clicks. And if I try and adjust it, you'll see no matter where I move it, it will snap to the same place. Same for the loop point. If I turn snap to phase off, now I can move my loop points anywhere and you're more likely to get clicks this way. So it's always best to have snap to phase on and then let the software do the work for you. So let's get back to looping our sample. So now I audition my loop by pressing the space bar and I can adjust the loop point and the stop point to try and get a smooth loop. And if I want to, I can adjust the crossfade to see if I can smooth this out further. And you see I get a graphic representation of the crossfade here. And also, this is how the level envelope comes in useful because graphically you can see how the crossfade is working as well. I'm going to continue adjusting. Until I've got a smooth loop. So that sounds pretty good. So I'm going to select my next sample turn on loop and repeat the process.
until all my samples are looping nice and smoothly. Now the last thing I like to do, select all, go up to tools and in level choose normalize and this will optimize the level of all my samples so they all play at the same volume. And now this is ready to transfer onto my stage three. So I just press the save and transfer to null button. This will save the project and it will transfer it onto my stage three. And the resultant file is only 2.3 meg in size. Now the software will automatically save your sample instrument into the first available space in your keyboard's memory. And your keyboard itself should automatically load up the sample so it's there ready for editing straight away. But if you want to know where your sample actually is on your keyboard, then press the manager button and this is a shortcut to a cut down version of Nord Sound Manager software. And you can scroll through the memory of your connected keyboard to find where it's put your sample. And I can see that my MS-10 sample has been put in location 99, as this must have been the first available slot in my Stage 3's memory. This shortcut to Sound Manager is also useful if you need to free up space in your connected keyboard to make room for more sample instruments you're creating, because it allows you to select a sample and then you can delete it to free up space. But you don't need to do this with your existing sample instrument if you decide you need to make any modifications to it. If you make any changes within the sample editor software, Next time you hit the save and transfer to Nord button, it will just update your existing sample instrument. So you won't be filling up your keyboard with unwanted versions of it. So now we've finished with sample editor, the last thing to do is go to the save menu, select consolidate project, and this will combine your project and all your samples all in one nice neat folder. So there's no danger of them getting separated. So, here is my Korg MS-10 sound on my stage 3. And even though we only sampled a selection of notes, you can hear that I have the full range of the keyboard at my disposal. And you can also hear that I have infinite sustain on my notes because of all the loops I made. And the sound will not cut out until I release a note. Now I also mentioned that you can control the length of your sound using the amp envelope. So if I hold a note down now, I go to my amp envelope and shut everything down. Now, we don't hear anything. But as I increase the decay, you can hear the note coming in. So I can decide how long I want that note to last using the decay function. And if I turn decay all the way up, I get full sustain. I can also control how long the note lasts when I release a note using the release control. So now, now at the moment if I play a note, it doesn't matter how lightly or hard I play the note, the sound remains at the same volume. However, if I go into the velocity section of the amp envelope, I have different velocity curves that I can select. So if I choose velocity curve 3, for example, now, I have complete control over the dynamics of that sound. Now both these functions, amp envelope and velocity, can be found on all the Nord keyboards which are sample based. So you can do exactly the same thing if you own a piano, a grand, an electro, or a wave. But because I've loaded my sample instrument into a stage 3 and I have a fully blown synth engine at my disposal, to finish off I'm going to use the front panel controls to manipulate my new sound a bit further and see what we can come up with. Let's run with the filter. Get the mod envelope to modulate that. effects on, phase, bit of delay, bit of EQ, and some reverb.
So there you go, a brand new sound on my Stage 3, which originated from an analog synth and was created using Sample Editor 4 software. So I hope this tutorial has been useful to you and you can see how you can use the software to create your own sample instruments and load them onto your Nord keyboard. Maybe you want to be condensing your studio setup into one portable live rig, or you might be wanting to create loops that you can play along with. Whatever you want to do, the Sample Editor 4 software allows you to create your own unique sounds and load them onto your Nord keyboard.